Howdy folks, so we're back with uh, with the old Miata stereo. This is the original stereo to my 94 uh, MX-5 Miata. This is the coveted and very valuable silver stereo. Um, these units were, again, and I mentioned this in the past video, but um, they're just not easy to find, dead or alive. Um, and uh, just to answer one quick, uh, qu not question, but comment that somebody had made that you can hook up an auxiliary input on this unit through a DIN connector. I want to remind you that on this particular unit, um, they, there is indeed a DIN connector on the back, but in this case, it's used for the body sonic uh, seat pulser things that make this stereo so unique um, and so coveted. So that is not a possibility. You cannot you cannot add an audio input um, aside from maybe one of those ridiculously crappy direct antenna uh, broadcast type units where they actually create an FM or AM signal and broadcast through the tuner. Um, I want to save this stereo, whatever the cost. I <laughs> I'm going to put it back in the car. I've decided it needs to go back in the car if I can save it. Um, and by, by saving it, I mean restoring the CD player functionality 100%. It does work, but it works poorly. It skips at the slightest provocation. And there's two possible causes for that, which I went over in the previous video. And two causes could be A, a weak laser from age and use and heat exposure and all that. Or B, and this is definitely a problem with my unit, these rubber mechanism bushings. These are what cushion the mechanism um, while it's, you know, while it's, while a CD is loaded. So this is a neat little mechanism. What it does, and I, I, I demonstrated this in the previous video, but when there's no CD in the mechanism, the whole uh, CD player mechanism locks into position. Um, and when it is loaded with a CD, it automatically unlocks. And these pins, which are at four, all four corners of the mechanism, mount, or sorry, allow the unit to float within these little grommet things. Now, here's the problem. These grommet things are, they're, they're actually, um, they're kind of interesting. They're full of air. When they were produced, there was probably a, a gas <coughs> or a regulated amount of air somehow added into this little, it's actually hollow inside. And um, I have not seen anything like this before in anything I've ever worked on. But they're a hollow rubber shock absorber. And the rubber has degraded over time to the point where they can no longer support the weight. This should be able to support the weight of the mechanism and it no longer does that. So what I want to do, as I got myself a Dixie cup, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cement this to the bottom of a Dixie cup and I'm going to fill it up with a little bit of wax. Then we're going to remove the wax from the Dixie cup and then remove the shock absorber. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill the cavity with RTV silicone. Um, it's not the best solution, but it's certainly a it's, a, it's a shot. Might work, might not. No harm, no foul. We're not going to ruin the part of the process, I assure you. But it'll be interesting to see what happens. So I've got plenty of, uh, I'm going to use golf paraffin wax. And I'm going to melt that in a... Um, in a glass container and then pour it in. So we've got the grommet or shock absorber glued in. And what I'm gonna do is pour hot wax into there. Um, it's not glued in very well, but it should be enough to keep it from floating to the surface. Ideally, I don't think I want it to cure. I just want it to, um, to keep it sealed. I don't want wax getting under it. I want it to be easy to remove this from the mold. I figure one of these should should do the job. 
Yeah, it's not going anywhere. Let's microwave this. Okay, so now, very carefully, oh, you bastard. very gingerly, oh, I can't, I can't do this with, with gloves on, <laughs> shit, grab the cup, wax, Gently pour it in. Wow, that's hot. I can feel it coming through the... Okay. Now I gotta pour the rest out. Somewhere. On. Hopefully that hardens pretty uh, reasonably. The part's not deforming, so that's good. Okay, good. Bottoms up. All right. It's very hot. So we'll just set this aside. It won't get bothered for a bit. Oreo, he's not going to hurt you. Oreo, Oreo. Okay, so let's see how we did. So it's uh, fully casted. You can see that the, the wax, it shrank in the middle of the casting, which is why I'm glad I put so much wax in there. Either that or the rubber part shrunk from the cooling effect and drew it down. I don't know. We're going to find out. So I'm going to tear the cup apart. And we're going to see what we got here. See, my biggest fear was that it was going to um, shrink during the cooling process. And that might be what happened. And as a result, it creates a vacuum in the mold and it just sucks it down. Um, so that, and that would be rather unfortunate. I'm going to need um, a lighter to heat this up. Hopefully it doesn't ignite. I can't see what's on the camera, so if I'm out of frame, I am so sorry. I don't have my camera anymore. It completely died. It just said, you know what? I am done making crappy videos for you. I am done. Okay, look at that. So now we can we can easily get material in there. Now the question is, oh no, oh no, it'll be fine. You just gotta kind of break it away from the mold. I don't want to ruin this part because I can't replace it. Um, you know what? I think it worked out. No, it, mis it, it got misshapen. So 
All right, the part is uh, probably not salvageable now, but what happened was it did in fact shrink a little bit and we ended up with a situation where we have a um, an almost triangular an almost triangular shape in there. Not good. Looks like the walls caved in. That's not the end of the world though. I think what I'm going to do. So what we're going to do is we're going to try to carve out the mold and then kind of test fit one of the other parts in that hasn't been mutilated. And uh, and I should be able to make multiple parts from this one mold. Just make sure we have a nice lip there. Okay, then I'm going to just take my lighter and just kind of apply a little smoothing to it. That well, didn't really work out. Make sure it has a nice pronounced lip at the top so that it doesn't fall through the, uh, the mount that it goes into. All right, I'm going to check the depth with a um, micrometer or a pair of digital calipers. We're going to just check the depth on it to make sure that uh, it has the correct depth when compared to a part that hasn't been subject to heat and cooling like that. Okay. So it looks like in the bottom of the mold, it's about 16.28 uh, millimeters, give or take. So we'll check a, a good part and see how that looks. Now it's also important that we give the new part something to um, something for the pin to set into. Now the pin is about 2.2 millimeters thick. 2.3, 2.2, 2. Yeah. So what do we have that can uh, serve as a? So we're making it. We're, we're getting very complex here. We're making a two-piece mold <laughs> in a way. Now this toothpick is 1.94 millimeters. I think that's close enough. What we don't want to have is, and by the way, I checked the depth and it is perfect. Absolutely perfect depth now that we've carved it out a little bit. But we need to provide a center hole for the pin and the mechanism to, to kind of flow it into. So I'm going to just eyeball it here a lot of this is going to be just kind of good enough for the job close enough for government work is, a, is an expression that I'm going to be using a lot here so that's going to be our center pin okay So we have a mold for a new bushing. I'm gonna mold one bushing to see how this goes. I have some silicone, it's not the freshest, so it may not work. Um, I'm a little, a little nervous that it won't work, but let's see what happens. Oh, before I do that, I should probably coat the stick with oil or something so that it doesn't adhere to the, uh, to the RTV. So let's go ahead and fill the cavity. And it's just kind of injected in there. We don't want any air pockets. 
And then I'm going to I'm going to do one of these. I want to make sure that when it does, and it will shrink as it cures, we're going to be peeling this off, and then we're going to cut it at the, uh, at the beginning of the part that we want. I'm going to just go ahead and put that pin down the middle. So we know we're good because it, it kind of oozed out of here. Um, I don't think that's enough coverage. I'm going to have to kind of maybe pack it in with my finger. Yeah. This is a mess. But hey, for science. Well, not really. I'm going to stick our toothpick through the middle. Do our best to keep it vertical and then throw some more RTV down the middle here. There we go. They make silicone for this purpose. Um, I just don't have any on me, so this is what I got. So that's number one. I got to do this four times. We'll see how the first one comes out. If it works, I'll use the mold over again. We'll make a second, a third, a fourth, however many we need. It's going to take about a day or so for that to fully cure, and that's how long I'm going to let it. So let's see what happens. So now's that time when we uh, come back to this the next morning and see how this uh, all worked out for us or didn't. Um, let me get my camera positioned. Using my iPhone as a camera now, which is challenging. It doesn't, it doesn't feel like it's fully cured yet. It's been a while. Now, it's not fully cured yet. So maybe it was too thick. We might have to use a catalyzed... Um, silicone. Um, so I'm going to try this again when I get back, when I get home from work. And we'll, we'll see. See how it looks then. Uh, it's only cured on the outside. The inside is not cured. It could be because of a lack of oxygen exposure. Uh, this stuff cures when exposed to oxygen, so it might have to be, um, it might be too thick. This is, no, this is, a, this, I'm glad this happened. Um, again, it's, it's not over yet. I mean, this could still be fine, um, probably in another eight hours or so. But there's a, there's a lesson to be learned here. RTV, when used in an internal combustion engine, okay, um, you don't want to go nuts with this stuff because it doesn't cure as fast as you think it does when it's in when it's applied thickly. So there's a lesson to be learned here, and I'm glad this this is what happened. Um, it is it's not fully cured yet, and it's been seven eight hours or so since I poured this. When you use RTV sealant in an internal combustion engine to make gaskets and other things. What ends up happening is the stuff doesn't fully cure as fast as you think it does when it's applied thickly. So a lot of times people will use our TV silicone, you know, to seal an oil pan or a water pump or what have you. And they apply a lot of it and they just squish it all together. What's ha what happens is, is the stuff doesn't always cure uh, completely. And it gets mobilized when the oil or coolant or whatever starts flowing. And it starts to clog things up. A lot of times when you 
tear down an engine that has failed after a rebuild or after repair work was done, you're gonna find that there's a lot of this stuff in the oil pickup screen. You'll find it in the cooling passages, in the radiator. Just don't go don't go nuts with RTV silicone. It it's it's good stuff, but if you don't give it enough time to cure, it's actually more harmful than it is good. So we're gonna come back in about eight hours after I get out of work and we're gonna see what it looks like. Alright, so here's the deal. Um just took a quick look at this. It's eight hours later, and it still isn't curing in the middle. So I think this is a colossal fail. What I need to do is get um, a different type of silicone. You see, it's just not curing. There's, uh, there's not enough oxygen in the middle. It's too thick. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a two-part silicone, and uh, yeah, it's not even not even remotely curing. So I'm going to try to give that a few days to solidify so I can reuse the mold. But what I'm going to do ultimately is I'm going to get some uh, two-part uh, silicone, which is like a moldable product, and it might have a more a much firmer consistency, better texture than this will. Um, so we at least we have a mold. And, and just a little heads up, I did buy that Mazda MPV stereo, which is actually a basically the same unit. And it'll give me more chances to fuck up. So it'll be a great source of parts. Um, it was like 30 bucks on eBay. It's a, it has a non-working CD player, but I, I suspect it's for the same reason that this one was acting up. So uh, with any luck, I'll be able to fix it with a brand new laser assembly, which I can still buy. And uh, we're going to give that a shot. At least this will give some hope to other people who, like myself, are trying everything we can to preserve these old stereos. Um, so we'll continue this video later and see what happens.